Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 100. And 45. Please turn to it, page 145. The very first problem that you will see on page 145 is number 211. As you can see, it's already on the blackboard, so let's get going. It says that we are to make codes. Codes that will consist of either a single letter or a pair of letters. If it is a pair of letters, it has to be in alphabetical order. Question simply is, what is the least number of letters that are needed to come up with 12 codes to identify 12 different people? Do you understand? Let's get going. Why don't we start with four? Let's start with one. Let's try four. Let's try four letters and let's see if that would do the trick or if it's not sufficient we can move on. So if you have four letters A, B, C, D, E well with four letters obviously we can identify four people by calling them A, B, C, D so that's four and now, so that's the, that's the single letter, now we can start using a pair of letters. So we have A, B, C, and D. And since we are supposed to go in alphabetical order, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we can have A, B, A, C, or A, D. That's three. That's not enough. That's only seven. We need 12 of them. Let's start with B now. We can't have B, A because that's not in alphabetical order. So we have to go B, C, B, D. That's two more. So now we have seven plus two is nine. And finally, we can have C, D. That's not enough. That's only 10. That's only 10. We need to identify 12 people. Therefore, if 4 is not enough, the least number of letters that we need here, if 4 is not enough, the answer is 5. And obviously, if you try out the 5, you'll find that there, that's plenty. 5 actually will identify 15 different, 15 different people. Number 2, number 212. Number 212, we are told that the equation of a line parallel to the one shown. And what is shown to us in the picture is something like this. It goes through 2, so the height is 2, and it cuts the x-axis at negative 3. One, two, three. There we go. That is what it looks like, which means the slope of this line, slope of this line, is it goes from negative three to zero. That's a, that's a that's a run. That's three, and the rise is two. That's it. We're looking for a line that has a slope of two third. Let's try out answer choice A. We have three y minus 2x we are told is equal to 0. Bring the 2x to the other side, that implies that 3y must equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 3 and y is equal to 2 third x plus 0. There we go. It has the same slope. It has a 0 in intercept. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, it goes through the origin, but that's not, a, that's not our point of interest. The point of interest is that it has the same, same slope as the one that is shown. The answer is A. And since we already found one that this works, obviously all the others are wrong. If you try out, you'll find that B and C have negative slopes. And what is shown in D and E are the reciprocals. They're playing with us in C, in D and E. The lines that are given to us have a slope of three halves, not two thirds. You have to pay attention. And B and C have a negative slope. This we can clearly see is the part is positively sloped line. 213. In 213, we are given this equation. The height we are told is equal to negative 16.
t minus 3 squared plus 150 and this this equation that we see there it, it tells us how high an object is going to be an object that is thrown in the air how high is it going to be at any, at any given point in time at uh, t represents the number of seconds after it has been released vertically the question is at what height at what height is the object two seconds after it reaches its maximum height. We have to pay attention to the wording. It does not ask us how how high the object is. It is not asking us how high the object is going to be two seconds after it has been released. That would have been very straightforward. All we have to do is substitute two in here and figure out the answer. That's not what is being asked. The question here is at what height is the object two seconds after it has reached its maximum height. So first we, first we have to figure out where is the maximum height, at what time, and then we have to understand that we're looking for the height two seconds after that. Where do we find the, where do we find the maximum height? At, at what time? Well, this is our equation here. Where is it going to reach maximum height? As you can see, this quantity is negative. This quantity is, has a negative in front of it. This is positive, which means at any given point in time, this quantity is taking something away from 150, which means the maximum height, maximum value that H can take is 150 if we can somehow make this quantity equal to zero. And that's all we have to do. Make this quantity equal to zero and figure out what T is. It is at that point in time that it reaches the maximum height because this quantity becomes zero. As you can clearly see, this quantity is going to become zero when t is equal to three. When t is equal to three, when t is equal to three, what we end up here is three minus three. It doesn't matter what is in front of it. It doesn't matter the fact that it's squared. Three minus three is zero. Zero times anything is zero. This quantity disappears when t is equal to three. That's when it reaches its maximum height. And we're looking for the height two seconds after that. We're looking for the height five seconds after it has been released. And that's all there is. All we have to do now is put five in here and get the answer. It reaches its maximum height when t is equal to three. We're looking for the height of the object. What is, at what height is the object two seconds after, two seconds after it reaches the maximum height. Maximum height is re reached. Maximum height is reached when t is equal to three. Two seconds after is five. So let's do it. Minus sixteen, five minus three. The rest is very straightforward. One fifty, and that's the two. Two squared is four. Four times sixteen is sixty-four. So it's minus sixty-four. So essentially, it is one fifty minus sixty-four. I'm just going to do it here. That's going to give us ten minus four is ten minus four is six, and fourteen minus six is going to be eight. There you go. Turns out that the object is going to be at the height of 86 feet five seconds after it has been released. How high is this object going to be three seconds after it's been released? Well, three seconds, three seconds after it has been released, it is going to be at its maximum height, which is 150. 216. In 216, we are told that eight teams play against each other. Question simply is number of games that are played. And of course, of course, in the actual exam, they cover all the bases, so they all they go on to tell you that each team is going to play the other team only once. I'm not going to put that on the blackboard. It's understood. So how do we figure out how many games are going to be played uh, amongst eight teams? Each each team is going to is if each team is to play other team only once. Well, that's very straightforward. 
there are eight teams at any at given any one team that you pick out of those eight if you pick one team out of that those eight teams that one team can only play against seven seven other teams but that's not the end of the story when the team when the team A plays against team B that is one and the same match as team B playing against team A it's the same match it's, these are not two different matches in other words order does not matter here this is a combination problem this is a combination problem this is not a permutation in other words having taken 8 times 7 we have to understand that in, and embedded in this quantity 8 times 7 everything is counted twice we are counting AB as one one game and BA is another game we are counting CD as one game and DC is another game we can't have that everything is double counted so all you do is divide by 2 because we are double counting there you go the answer is 28 28 matches are going to be played uh, amongst this team, uh, amongst these eight teams, if each team is to play the other team only once. This is a combination problem as we said, not a permutation one. Order does not matter. So this was one way of doing it. The other way, other way is actually manually doing it out, which is which we can do it too if you like. Let's do it here. I don't want to erase this thing. Let's do it here manually. I left very little room for myself. Let's do it very quickly here. So we have eight teams. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is going to take some time, which is why it's called manually. So team, so now I'm calling the team not A, B, C, D. I'm calling them team 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all the way. So team 1 can play against 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8. That's 7. Those are 7 matches. Team 2, having played, having had a match between team 1 and team 2, that's the same match as the one between team 2 and team 1. So we can't count it again. So team 2 can play two, two, team 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. That's six thing. And if you keep on going, you're going to find the next is going to be five possibilities. 3 can play 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as you can see. And so on and so forth. 4, 3, and finally the 2 and the 1. As I said, I left very little room. When you add them all up, you will find that this, is, this turns out to be... 24 but that's a very long and rather 28 7 times 4 is 28 but as you can see this is rather long and tedious way of doing it hence the manual way this is the combination problem we simply have to understand that because everything is counted twice we have to divide the quantity by 2 number 217 the very last one on that page. In 217 we are told this is this is a little bit elaborate, this is a little bit involved, so I'm gonna to have to write a lot of things on the blackboard. We are told that the estimated labor cost is $336. So I'm about to take on a job, you're going to hire me to do something for you in your home and I estimated my labor cost to be $336. That's my estimate before I started the job, hence the estimate. It turns out, so I had some, in my mind, obviously I had some idea as to how long it was going to take. Turns out that I was wrong. The job actually took me, the job actually took me four hours longer than expected. If I thought the job was going to take 10 hours, it ended up taking 14 hours. If I thought it was going to take 30 hours, it ended up taking me 34 hours. You get the idea. As a result, because it took me before, because it took me four more hours than I was expecting it to take. As a result, I made I made two dollars less per hour. For example, if I thought that the job was going to take 10 hours, I was going to make $33.60 per hour. Instead of 10 hours, it ended up taking me 14 hours. I'm making less than $33.60.
In this scenario, it turns out that I'm making exactly $2 less than what I thought I was going to make on the hourly basis. The question simply is, what is the estimated number of hours for the job? The estimated number of hours, the number of hours that I estimated, we're going to call it E. What did I think? how long the job was going to take me before I began it. Let's find out, shall we? Now we have the problem, we can set it up now. So let's start the process. I wanted to make $336 based on some number of hours that I thought the job was going to take me. Let's call that E. Hence, the hourly wage that I thought I was going to make is this quantity. But in reality, I'm still getting the same amount of money the person who hired me is not going to pay me more money just because I was stupid enough to underestimate the number of hours by four. Just because I end up taking four more hours than I thought I was going to take. The employer is not going to pay me more money. I'm still getting the same amount of money. But now it turns out that I have worked E plus four hours. This quantity represents the hourly wage which is two dollar less than this hourly wage. In other words, if we were to add two to it, these two quantities are equal. And that's all there is. That's the end of it. We simply have to solve this equation for E. Very straightforward, simple process. Tedious and long process, but not complicated. It's a simple quadratic equation. Let's start on the beginning. Let's start on the top because we need the room. So first thing we're going to do is uh, make this make this the same denominators e plus 4 and make this e plus 4 so that makes it simple so now this has a denominator of e plus 4 and this quant side has a, a quant denominator of e let's multiply this side by e in other words we have the 336 plus 2 times e plus 4 that's what we have here take this quantity and multiply it by e so this e ends up there and we're going to multiply this quantity by e plus 4 because they have the same denominator. So you see e plus 4 and e plus 4. So we have 336 e plus 4. Now we can write that on the top. Uh, at this point, so we have 336 e plus 4 times, 4 times 336 right here. And on this side we have e times, well let's open this thing, we could, we could have, we have 336 here and we are going to have 8 over here. So I'm going to rewrite it, e times 336 plus 8, 336 plus 10 would have been 346, so it's 344. 344 plus 2e. You see where we're going with it? Now we can write it on top here by multiplying by e, so we're going to get 344e and then plus 2e squared. Let's subtract 336 from 336e from both sides. You understand sometimes when you're trying to explain to somebody, it takes much longer because in the real exam, you would skip a lot of steps and you will, you will go a little bit faster, hopefully. So let's, 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 let's finish it, this is gone, and here we have uh, 8e plus 2e squared, here we have 4 times 336, let's multiply, let's multiply both sides by 2, so this 2 drops out, this becomes 4, and this becomes 2. So what we are left with at this point, What we are left with at this point, at the quadratic equation, that looks like this. 2 times 336 equals to 4e plus e squared. Do you understand? 4e plus e squared. At this point, we have two choices. One choice is to carry on in, like we have been in a very traditional, classical, orthodox way, uh, like a goody two-shoe, which is to solve this thing this, which is to solve this thing in a, a, as an, a quadratic equation, quadratic equation, because that's what the bloody thing is. It's a quadratic equation, e squared plus 4e minus 2 times 336, and use the quadratic formula and go on from there. 
but that that is going to be a very ugly work that's going to be quite nasty so here's what we're going to do whenever the answer choices are numerical let's look at the very quickly the answer choices here 217 we have 28 28 24 i shouldn't have written the answer choices in my notes but i didn't 16 14 and 12 16 14 and 12 so listen carefully whenever the answer choices are numerical in the exam if the answer choices are all numericals, they are always, always, always written in numerical order, either ascending order or descending order. Either they go up or they go down, but they're never mixed up. They don't give you 2, 7, 5, 3, uh, and 17. You get the idea. They always arrange in order. If they arrange in order, let's start with a happy medium. I'm just going to pretend that the answer is 16. We're just going to pretend that the answer is 16 put it in here and see if it works and it will take you it should take you no more than two seconds to understand that it does not work because if this is 16 let's put it in here oh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit simpler here let's, this is so that we don't have to multiply twice let's take out E outside so 4 plus E that makes much life much easier if we put 16 in here if we put 16 in here we get 20 because if E is 16, 4 plus, 4 plus E is 20, and times 16, as you can clearly see, 16 times 2 is 32, therefore 16 times 3 is 20, 16 times 20, it's just going to be 320 on this side. On this side we have 2 times 336. This side we have 2 times 336, and this is only 320. As you can see, this quantity is far larger than that one. I'm explaining too much here in the real exam. I hope it does not take you this long to analyze this thing on your head. This quantity is way too small. E has to be much larger. E has to be much larger. What does it mean? Which means that even if you were to stop the problem right now, we already have a 50-50 chance of being right, because the answer has to be either 40, or rather, it can, this can be 40. Oh, it is 40. They're going down. The answer has to be either 14 or 12. Your choice. You, your, your choice. You choose. You can try 14 or 12. If you try 12, it turns out the 12 is too small, the answer must be 14. Oh no, E has to be larger. It's either 24 or 28. Sorry, I should, uh, we have to go the other way. Yeah, e has to be larger. It's either 24 or 28. I'm just going to try 24. Same thing. We're going to try 24 now. So if you try to, so this one does not work. We're going to try 24. We're going to try 24. 24 plus 2 is 28. Now this looks a little bit more promising. And the question is, is 16 times 28 same as 2 times... Uh, 36, 336. That's the question. Let's find out very quickly. Uh, let's see what we can do. Divide both sides by 2. That 2 goes away. This becomes 8. Let's divide both sides by 4. This is going to become 2. 30, 33, 33 has 8 fours are 32. So 8, 8 fours are 32. Carry 1. 1 becomes 16. 16 has 4. And now this is 28. And uh, I'm just going to carry on. This has become seven. This is uh, two and one. Sixteen. This. Two and one. Does. Thirty-two is eight. Sixteen is four. Three thirty six Ah can you figure out what I what mistake I made here? Now you understand I I as always in videos like this when an instructor makes a mistake he or she has a very easy choice. One is to re redo the whole thing and upload the new one new one with the correction in which case you would have never known that I made a boo-boo. Other option is to continue here so that you can learn what, what sort of pitfalls are there, what sort of mistake one can possibly make when one is not paying attention. Can you spot the mistake here? I made a mistake here. I made a mistake here. mistake was that when we moved on from 16 to 24, we established that 16 does not work. When we moved on from 16 to 24, I did remember to go 
to take care of this thing, 24 plus 4 is 28. I did remember that part, but I forgot that part. This is no longer, this is no longer 16. We're trying out 24, which is why it's not working out. Let's start again. I'm going to start again. This is not 16. This is 24. And I'm going to start again. Because I knew 28 was not going to work because I already tried it here two times. So 2 times 336. Let's do it together. This time we're going to pay attention. Let's begin. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 first. So 20, 28 is going to become 7. If 30, 33 has 8. 8 fours are 32. 8 fours are 32. After we take away 32 from 33, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins a 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 is made up of 4 fours. So that part is done. Let's go one more round, divide by 4, this becomes 6, and this is going to become 21. 8, has, 8 is made up of 2 4s, and 4 is, just has 1 4. So th this is what, what we're looking for. 6 times 7, is that same as 2 times 21? The answer of course is yes. 6 7s are 42, and 2 2 21s are 42. The answer is B. 28 is not going to work. That was the end of this page. I'm going to stop right here so that I don't end up making more fool of myself because I always like to save some stupidity for tomorrow. So I'm going to stop right here. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 30 and we're going to pick up from the next page from number 218. All right. If you're interested in getting hold of me, if you're looking for a, a tutor to help you prepare for the G GMAT, go to my website at keshwaniprep.com. From there you can send me an email or you can sign up for the online video courses. You'll find all the information there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.